Hello everyone. A common question in the last video that was uploaded was who are the Jews? Who are the Israelites? What is the state of Israel? Another common question was who are the two witnesses? Many people, theologians, priests, preachers, etc. where Jesus said don't be a priest there is only one teacher and that is Jesus the Christ and of course people go off and make themselves priests they stand on street corners barking through megaphones Jehovah's Witnesses bothering people pounding on their door where Jesus says don't do that we are to pray to God directly we are the church individually and wants to be good and serve the I am Yahweh God creator of the universe. Jesus said, when you want to talk to God, go into the closet. Don't go to church. Jesus said, don't go to church. Don't go to synagogue. He spent most of his time fighting evil, not being a pansy. Yes, turn the other cheek, but one must also, with the sword of truth, fight evil and bring people's awareness to go back to God's law. There is no freedom without the justice of God's law. The ancient Babylonian system, the Vatican Jesuit Roman Catholic system, is enslavement and communism, which is coming because no one is standing up and fighting for God's law. Jesus said don't go to church. Don't go to synagogue. Pay your tithes, do your alms in private, in secret. Don't wave big red envelopes as you parade through the church that you're not supposed to be at and put it on the stage. I've recently been to a service where they actually did that. I couldn't believe it. I shouldn't have been there, but I was there for another reason. You're supposed to give money to the poor or in service of building the kingdom of God here on earth in secret, in private not give it to your churches and your ministers who work for Satan because they deceive you and deceive the American people and the people worldwide basically anyone who listens to a priest or an imam or a following Sharia law or the Hadith or the Talmud are deceived before you can understand the truth of the Bible prophecies, which take up to two-thirds of it, or anything similarly complex, you have to decide to be totally objective and analytical about the facts presented and not distracted by irrelevant claptrap from organized religions and holier-than-thou theories. The Bible itself warns you not to be led by the blind guides of organized religions and politics. Isaiah 3 verse 12 to 15, Matthew 23 verse 13, 16, and 24. Like reading blueprints or electrical circuit diagrams, there is some learning to be done, and fortunately the instruction for this is in the Bible, and as you might expect, some of it is coded to stop idiots interfering with the meaning. So it is imperative to get the best translation the New King of Kings Bible by Jah, authorized by God, or use the previous best, the King James 1611 original, which is the only human kingly authorized version and not modernized satanically corrupted translations done by successive churches. It's mind-boggling how many different variations of the Bible, not to mention the New World Order's version, the NIV. I believe the devil wants to take over the church. I believe the devil wants to take over this church. One person at a time. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Close your window. Go back inside your house. We have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations 
can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order, and instead it looks like we got a lot of disorder. It's been a long time coming because of what we did on this day, at this defining moment. Change has come to America. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. The affirmative task we have now is to actually create a new world order. Its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. defined as you have as being luciferian yes um, how do you know that my investigations led me to look at the back of the american dollar and i found these strange seals on the dollar here they are illuminati seals which was a secret society set up in 1776 by a man called adam weishaupt and on the back of the dollar here you see the seal on the left hand side and there's an eye in the triangle it's the eye of horus in egyptian mythology now called the Eye of Lucifer, or Satan. The top annual chapters stand for announcing the birth of, and down the bottom, Novus Ordo Seclorum. And that great seal of the United States has on it, Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new order. And people should be asking the question, what is an Egyptian pyramid doing on the back of an American dollar? What link up is there between America and Egypt? The answer is none at all, except in the field of the occult. And thus we see we're dealing with a Luciferian plan. People need to recognize the God of Freemasonry will lead the world into this peculiar and particular purpose for which America was set up, which is to lead the whole world system into a one world government, a one world religion, a one world law system, and a one world money system that the Bible calls the mark of the beast. There is going to be a changeover from the old order to a new order a rule by Satan himself. That's what that symbol refers to, and that's what the New World Order refers to. In the King James, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Notice how the New English Bible renders this verse. It says the old order is gone, and a new order has begun. They're using the same language. The King James says which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Reformation, talking about Christ's coming, but notice the NIV calls it until the time of the new order. They're preparing people. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, this is the King James, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Again, on the foundation. Notice that the NIV calls him the capstone. They're saying that that symbol that you see represents Christ. It doesn't. It represents who? Anti-Christ. I pray that you will stay, however, my friends, with this great book, the Word of God. This truly is what we need to turn to. The time is short. A great falling away from the truth. It's happening. It's right here now. And whenever I tout the King of Kings Bible on this YouTube channel, I have all these King Jamesers and all these quote-unquote so-called religious people telling me that the Bible should not have any additions to it. Meanwhile, there's, I think, 88 now different variations of the Bible. Do all of those undergo the same scrutiny? I don't think so. Only the King of Kings Bible, because the King of Kings Bible puts the Koran in where it belongs, puts the books in the order that they should be in, and replaces books that have been removed by the satanic elite. Let's look at some of the codes to get you started, so you may agree when you look upon the chapter and verse, if you care to check it out. Son, the throne of David, Psalm 89, verse 36, which is the British throne. 
the stone of scone, is Jacob's pillar, and Israel's throne of David. The moon reflects the light of the sun. The sun is the British throne, and the Commonwealth reflects her light power like the moon does to the sun. Stars of heaven, the USA, 50 on their flag, star-spangled banner, etc. Heavens, political system above the mountains. Mountain, government, Mika 4 verse 1. Earth, downtrodden people, oppressed and poor. Earthquake, great upheaval of earth as above. Sea, restless moving people who are not oppressed and are free to move around. Psalms 65 verse 6 to 7. Waters, people, multitudes, nations, and tongues, languages. Apocalypse Revelation 17 verse 15. Horn, kingdom, unicorn, unique horn, one kingdom, world without end, God's kingdom on earth, soon. Olive, the house of Israel, people, not country. Fig tree, Jews, Matthew 21 verse 20. Christ cursing Judaism forever in verse 19. Christ cursing Judaism forever in verse 19. A day is a year in prophecy. Ezekiel 4 verse 6. Revelation 9 verse 5. Month is 30 years in prophecy. Revelation 11 verse 2 to 3. 42 times 30 equals 1260. 7. The number of completeness in scripture. You need to use your common sense to see what is logical and sensible and whether the words are to be interpreted in their normal way or in God's code. A perfect example of this is when Christ said, If you have enough faith and you say to this mountain, Fall into the sea and it will. Matthew 21 verse 21. It obviously did not mean an actual mountain and the sea. It was coded. It is obviously possible for God to cast a mountain into the sea, but why would he want to destroy a beautiful mountain that he himself has created? It means government, mountain, and restless, dissatisfied people, the sea. Think about it. A mountain, government, towers over and looks down upon the sea of people, and the sea looks up at the mountain. If you have enough faith, and tell the people the truth of God's perfect system of government and laws, you can create that tidal wave, with God's help, for everyone's benefit. Simple. Now you can start to decode the prophecies and understand some of them. You cannot decode all of them because God said so in many places. Example, Daniel was told that the words of one prophecy were sealed until the time of the end. Daniel 12 verse 9. Apocalypse Revelation chapter 5 tells you that the book, Bible Prophecy, given to John was sealed with seven seals. That means completely sealed, because seven is the number of completeness in scripture. Seven days of creation, seven millennia, seven churches, etc. The commandments, laws, statutes, judgments, economic policy, agricultural policy, and diet are all written in plain language for everyone to understand and live by, but prophecies are written in code. The prophecies are written in code for two good reasons. They were not meant to be understood at the wrong time. That is, the majority were not meant to be understood by the people of the time when they were written. They were meant for the future, sometimes a few, sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands of years in the future. The last ones are still being fulfilled today. The prophecies warn of what is going to happen to the rich rulers of the earth and the churches who have worked with the rich to keep the masses in the dark, down and poor by helping the rich to hide God's perfect laws and substitute the rich people's oppressive and illegal laws. The rich rulers set the curriculum in their schools and control all knowledge given to the people so that they can control their minds and enslave them. If they could understand what the Bible says about them and how evil they are, they would have destroyed the Bible. God knowing all things and all people knew this, so wrote the Bible prophecies in code to protect them from destruction 
by our rich and evil rulers. Harsh description, but in God's eyes, according to his Bible, very true. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Revelation chapter 6. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. The white horse represents the horse upon which God's witness, Revelation 19 verse 11 and 1 verse 5, Isaiah 43 verse 12, rides as in Revelation 19 verse 11. 1911. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Revelation 1 verse 5. And from Christ Jesus, who is the faithful witness, and the first of the living incarnated among the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, upon him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Isaiah 43.12 I have declared and have saved, and I have showed, when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses. Cross-reference Revelation 11 Saith the I am that I am God. The true Israel people have on their coat of arms a lion and a unicorn, which is shown as a white horse with one horn. The lion is the main emblem of the two-tribed house of Judah, and the unicorn is the main emblem of the ten-tribed house of Israel. The coat of arms is therefore the rightful property of the twelve tribes of Israel and Christ their king. The word British is Hebrew, meaning the people of the covenant, Israel. However, in this instance referred to in Revelation 6.2, the person riding the white horse and witnessing for God, Isaiah 43 verse 11, is Joseph, who carried a bow. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. If you refer to Genesis 49:23, you will see, from the cross-referencing, that Joseph his descendants, was to have a bow, and with God's help, his branches were to run over the wall. Genesis 49:22. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the Almighty God of Jacob. For there is the shepherd, the cornerstone of Israel. Cross-reference 1 Corinthians 10.4, Daniel 2.34-5 and 45. 1 Corinthians 10.4 And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that went with them, and that rock was Christ. Daniel 2.34-35 and 35. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away. There was no place found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Daniel 2.45 for as much as thou saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, and the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Jacob, Joseph's dad, was told by God, Genesis 28 verse 14, that his seed was to spread forth to the west, east, north, and south in that order, which of course Joseph did, proving that God's word is eternally true. Genesis 28:14, And thy seed shall be as dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south, and in thy seed 
shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The horseman had a crown given to him, which is the crown of Israel, eventually to be worn by the true king of Israel, Christ. The British throne is the throne of David, the Leophael stone of destiny. Joseph went, his tribe, west to America, then east to India and Australia, and then north to Canada, and finally south to Africa, in exactly the same order specified in God's prophecy in Genesis 28:14, Conquering and to conquer. The British Empire, the British thought they were clever, but the glory is God's alone because he defeated their enemies to fulfill his prophecies and his master plan. The tribe of Joseph is, in fact, divided in two, Ephraim and Manasseh. Joseph had two sons called Ephraim and Manasseh, who today are the English and the Americans, respectively. Abraham, Joseph's great-granddad, was told by God that in Isaac shall your seed be called, cross-reference Genesis 21.12. Genesis 21.12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight, because of the lad, because of thy bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called Isaac's sons, Saxons. The British, English, and Americans are Anglo-Saxons. God's word is ever true. Joseph Ephraim, the English, went forth conquering during their witnessing period when they took the Bible around the world for God, fulfilling the days of their prophecy, God's prophecies about them. Joseph, Manasseh, the USA, split off from their brothers, the English, and Ephraim, lost a colony, Isaiah 49.20, and then went east, north, and south, Isaiah 49.20. The children which you shall have after you have lost the other, shall say again in your ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Joseph, Manasseh, the USA, also spread forth taking the Bible around the world and became a great people. Genesis 49.19 While Joseph, Ephraim, the English, became a multitude, commonwealth of nations, and God made their name great. Genesis 12.2 Great Britain. Genesis 49:19. For thy waste and thy desolate places, and the land of thy destruction, shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants, and they that swallow thee up shall be far away. Genesis 12:2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the I am is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. During the 1260 years of their witnessing and fulfilling of God's prophecies, they were assisted by and defended by God as stated by God in Genesis 49.23 and Revelation 11 verses 3 to 6. Genesis 49.23 And the kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the I am, for they shall be not ashamed that wait for me. Revelation 11, 3-6 And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. Cross-reference Isaiah 43.12 Isaiah 43.12 I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange gods among you therefore you are my witnesses Revelation 11 cross reference saith the I am that I am God 42 months of 30 days each equals 1260 days each day for a year cross reference numbers 14.34 after the number of days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, 
even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Cross-reference Ezekiel 4.6 And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again in thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed each day for a year. Code Daniel 12.7 Cross-reference And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the rivers, when he held up his right hand, and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever, that it shall be for a time three hundred and sixty times two equals seven twenty, and a half a hundred and eighty equals one thousand two hundred and sixty years in total, the ninth of December, nineteen seventeen, when Jerusalem was liberated from the treading down of Jerusalem by the Gentiles, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, Israel, Genesis 48, 11, and 16, and Revelation 11, 3, and 7. All these things should be finished. Genesis 48, 11. And Israel said unto the Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me thy seed. Revelation 11, 3 to 6 continued. Revelation 11, 4. These are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks, Ephraim and Manasseh, standing before, and if any man will hurt them, fire, gunfire, which looked as though it proceeded out of their mouths, and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, and it rain spiritually, not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters, chapter 17, verse 15, to turn them into blood reds, and smite the earth with all the plagues, as often as they will, chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Unfortunately, although protected by God whilst taking his word, the Bible, around the world, they did not allow God to water the seed, truth, Revelation 11.6, because they did not live by, believe, by, live, the Bible and the covenants that they made with God, two of them, the Old Covenant, Testament, and the New Covenant, Testament. The terms and penalty, punishment clauses, are contained in those books. I said, unfortunately for them, because they are going to be punished by God for breaking the covenant contract, Revelation 11.7, and choosing to live by and inflict their own selfish, greedy, and evil political systems on the rest of the world, instead of converting the whole world to living by God's own perfect system. If they kept the terms of the covenant contract, then the whole world would have, by now, become God's kingdom on earth. One king, one God, one law, one people, one kingdom, at peace. The unique horn. Unique horn. However, they broke the terms of the covenant, and consequently, the seed, truth, did not grow, and the Gentile world rejected God's word, the Bible, because they wrongly assumed that the two witnesses were doing what it was said in God's book. The Gentiles rightly judged the tree by the fruit it bears and were revolted by the actions, greed, and injustice of the political systems of the two witnesses, and therefore these peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, and languages, waters, Revelation 17.15, were turned blood-red communism. Revelation 17:15 And he saith unto me the waters which thou saw where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues away from God to Satan they were driven to communism by the actions of the two witnesses because the two witnesses have done to them whatever they liked as often as they willed wanted Revelation 11:6 Now we come to the second of the four horsemen and there went another horse that was red. The power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and they should kill one another, red and white horsemen. 
and there was given unto him a great sword. Karl Marx, the human invisible author of communism, working for his master, Satan, claimed that he had been given a sword by Satan, and he would drag God down from heaven and defeat him with it. Revelation 6.4 The second horseman on a red horse was given a great sword. Red is Satan's color. Revelation 12, 3, and 9. Revelation 6, 4. And there went out another horse that was red, communism, and power was given to him that sat thereon, take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 and 9. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and crowns upon his head. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, and he was cast out to earth. And his angels, you, Luke 9.55, were cast out with him, Luke 9.55. But he turned and rebuked them, and said, Ye know not what kind of spirit ye are of. Cross-reference, Revelation 12, 7-9, Matthew 8, 22. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, you that do not do God's will. In Revelation 11, 7, we are told that in the same day, year, when the two witnesses have finished their testimony, which was to be the same year that Jerusalem was to be liberated from its treading down by the Gentiles, Revelation 11, verse 2 to 3, the beast would rise out of the bottomless pit, Satan's place, and make war against the two witnesses, and shall overcome them and kill them. Note well, kill them. Revelation 11, 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the 1260 days ended on 9 December 1917, the day that Jerusalem was liberated from Gentile domination by Israel, British forces, Ezekiel 25:14. The beast system, satanic, that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. Revelation 11, 2-3. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city, Jerusalem, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, Isaiah 43.12, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Forty-two months of thirty days each equals 1,260 days, each day for a year. Cross-reference Numbers 14.34, Ezekiel 4.6, and Dan 12.7. The word Gentile means foreigner, non-Israelite, non-British people. Hence, the British expression, no matter where they might be, irrespective of whoever's country they might be in, I am not a foreigner, Gentile, I am British, Israelite. They say it automatically to native people in foreign countries. That is illogical unless you refer it back to the words Gentile and Israelite. They say it automatically as though God were speaking through them, which of course, in this instance, he is. Through them and to them at one and the same time, telling them that they are his chosen people, Israel. The British have always classed themselves as a nation apart from others and as being special, but God chose them to be his servant nation, not a master race. The year that Jerusalem was liberated by British Israel soldiers from Turkish Gentile domination was 1917. This same year, day in prophetic code language, 1917 saw the Red Communist Revolution in Russia and the beast system that rose out of the bottomless pit, satanically inspired and controlled, make war against the two witnesses for 70 years, all over the planet, and will soon, also, exactly as prophesied, overcome and kill the two witnesses, the UK and the USA. 
Jeremiah the prophet was told that God would bring again the captivity, slavery of his people Israel and Judah to punish them for walking contrary to him, his will and his ways and covenants. Jeremiah 30 verse 3 Restating Deuteronomy 28:68. Jeremiah 30 verse 3 For lo the days come, saith the I am, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the I am, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Deuteronomy 28:68. And the I am shall bring thee into slavery again with ships, by the way whereof I spoke unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, if ye keep the covenant, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondsmen and bondswomen, and no man shall buy you. That prophecy is nearing completion at this moment. So, for those of you who think that the Bible is an out-of-date book, now you can see that the Bible is more up-to-date than tomorrow's newspaper, and next week's too. The third horseman of the apocalypse rode a black horse, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances, weighing scales in his hand, and he was told the weights and the measures, and told not to hurt the oil, olive, and the wine, vine, Israel, and Judah, the people of the twelve tribes. This horseman represents unfair, black, trading, and ripping people off, driving entire nations into poverty for monetary gain by the rich rulers of the world. These people are not kings and presidents. Kings and presidents do not rule the world any more than prime ministers and politicians do. This world is run by a small group of extremely rich Jews who are known as the Hidden Hand. They say they are Jews and are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 3, 9. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan, which they say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Edomines. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. The Hidden Hand is the very same organization that was running the world for Satan 2,000 years ago and was behind the Sanhedrin and engineered the crucifixion. They decided to crucify the King of Israel rather than give up their immense wealth and power. These people were condemned by Christ when the fig tree was cursed, Matthew 21, 19. The fig tree is the symbol of Judaism, Matthew 21, 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. These same people had already been previously condemned as traitors by God through Jeremiah in the third chapters of Jeremiah. Note well verse 9 to 11. Treacherous Judah. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 9 to 11. And it came to pass through her making light of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with And yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but in pretense, saith the I am. And the I am said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself no more than treacherous Judah. Judah. Christ acknowledged that Satan was running the world through these people and their political systems, calling Satan the prince of this world. John 14.30 John 14.30 Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me, no influence. They were referred to as being the sons of Satan by Christ in John 8, 37, and condemned in Matthew 23 as being hypocrites for their evil, legal, and political systems. Woe to you scribes, lawyers, and Pharisees, politicians, hypocrites. John 8, 37 to 47. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God 
heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hath a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom makest you thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say, that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. The third horseman was told not to hurt the oil and the wine, the twelve tribes of Israel, but they have been hurt. The hidden hand have infiltrated the western Israel nations and taken control of them and used them and abused them to rip off the rest of the world and to make the entire nations poor, driving them to communism and hatred for Joseph and the Jews. The olive from which the oil comes was Jacob, Israel's emblem. Romans 11, 24-25 Romans 11, 24-25 for if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness is their true identity is happened to part of Israel, the ten lost tribes, the house of Israel, until the fruitful of the Gentiles be come in. The olive oil from which the oil comes was Jacob slash Israel's emblem, Romans 11 verse 24 to 25, which he gave along with his name Israel to Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, not Judah, the Jews. Genesis 48:16. We are told by God through Isaiah verse 43:12 that you Israel, Ephraim and Manasseh, not Judah, are my witnesses. Genesis 48:16. The angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name Israel be named on them. Let Ephraim and Manasseh be called Israel in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Isaiah 43.12 I have declared, and have saved, and I have showed, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses. Revelation 11 Saith thee I am, that I am God. If we look at history, and our national emblems yet again, we find more clues. Joseph, the white horseman, were both to have a bow. The bowmen of England are the most famous in history of the world, and with God's help were not defeated. Genesis 49.24 Genesis 49.24 But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there, there is the shepherd, the cornerstone of Israel. 1 Corinthians 10.4 Daniel 2, 34-35 and 45. Note well also where the shepherd will come from Joseph, not Judah, not from the Jews. God states in Genesis 49, 22-24, King James authorized version of the Bible, that from Joseph will come the shepherd, the stone, of Israel, not from the Jews, 
as is clearly stated in Genesis chapter 49. All links will be provided below. Now look at the American Eagle and you will see that in its left claws it holds arrows, 13 of them. Britannia in the full picture sits under an olive tree and the American Eagle has in its right claw an olive branch, the 13 olives and 13 leaves on it. Israel in scripture is referred to metaphorically as God's wife and Britannia is a woman not a man. Manasseh, the half-tribe of Joseph, was known as the 13th tribe of Israel. Look at American symbols and you will see 13 over and over again. There are 13 stripes on their flag. I could go into far more in minute detail on this subject, but I will refrain because those who do not want to see will refuse no matter how much proof I give them. And those who do want to see, will see already and be convinced of this truth. Revelation 11, 3, verse 3 to 4, tells us that God will give power to his two witnesses during the time of their testimony. The two witnesses are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. Revelation 11, 3 to 4, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, Isaiah 43, 12, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, Ephraim and Manasseh, standing before the God of the earth. Israel was to be God's witness, Isaiah 43, 2. And the olive tree was, is, Israel's emblem, Romans 11, 24-25. And Jacob, Israel, gave the olive emblem with his name Israel. His name was no longer Jacob. Genesis 32, verse 28. Given to him by the angel who redeemed him. Genesis 48:16. To Ephraim and Manasseh. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Romans 11, 22-24 Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which are natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Genesis 32:28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, champion of God. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with me, and with men, and hast prevailed. Genesis 48.16 The angel which redeemeth me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name Israel be named on them. Let Ephraim and Manasseh be called Israel. Let Ephraim and Manasseh be called Israel. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. So now we have two olive trees instead of only one, Ephraim and Manasseh, the two witnesses, and they became two candlesticks, Zechariah 4 verse 3, because they, during the days of their witnessing, translated the Bible, the light, into almost every human language and distributed it all over the world, also fulfilling God's prophecies. 11 verse 3 about them. Zechariah 4 3. The two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, the other upon the left thereof. Revelation 11 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, Isaiah 43 12, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. 42 months of 30 days each equals 1260 days each day for a year. 
cross-reference Numbers 14.34, Ezekiel 4.6, and Daniel 12.7. The fourth horseman of the Apocalypse rode a pale horse, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sit on him was Death, and Hellfire followed with him. And power was given unto them, the four horsemen, over the fourth part one quarter of the earth, to kill with the sword weapons, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. The horsemen rode on a pale sick horse, sickly green, in the Greek original text. The fourth horseman represents pollution, and nature dying sickly green, with famines, pestilence, and plagues brought about by climactic changes caused by deforestation and pollution. A quarter of the earth are killed by wars, famines, and with disasters, and with the beasts of the earth, disease, plagues, etc., carried by the beasts of the earth. Hellfire followed with him, death, because due to unjust and unfair trading, getting people to grow money crops instead of food, and causing deforestation and desertification, many regions creates hunger, and hunger causes war. War comes, and then the reaping of mankind with hellfire. In Ezekiel 38, we are told that God will put hooks into their jaws, hunger, and bring them against the mountains, governments, of the twelve tribes of Israel, who have insufficient defenses because of disarmament. When returning to the Apocalypse, Revelation chapter 6 again, in verse 12 onward, we are told that there was a great earthquake, upheaval of the downtrodden masses, and the sun, British throne of David, became black, loses all of its power, and the moon, British Commonwealth, became as blood, and the stars of heaven, the USA, fell into the earth, downtrodden people, even as a fig tree, the Jews, cast her untimely figs, and she is shaken of a mighty wind. Ezekiel 13.11 We are told that with a stormy wind I will rend, break down the wall of untempered mortar. Ezekiel 13.11 Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall, there shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. To refer back to Revelation again, for a moment, we are told that the two witnesses will be overcome and killed. This refers to the very same battle, the Battle of Armageddon, in the Valley of Jezreel, in Israel, near Endor. Then the heaven, political systems, departed as a scroll when closed up, Revelation 6.14, and every mountain, government, and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and their great men, and the rich men, and everyone asked their mountain, government, to hide them from him that sits on the throne, God, and from the wrath and vengeance of the Lamb. Revelation 6.14 and the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Next comes the reaping with hellfire. Are you ready? Are you sure? Don't be overconfident. Those of you who claim to be saved already are wrong. You do not mark your own test. Only the Lord marks your test, and you will have absolutely no say in it. So I suggest that you learn some fresh and real humility and start again, this time doing what the Lord says and not what you decide yourself. The self has to be crucified daily until it is dead, and you want only to serve your Lord and the common good, keeping the commandments, covenant, his laws and ways, and not your own. Anyone who wrongly thinks that God is unfair and that he should have warned you should read Ezekiel 38, paying close attention to
to verse 17 and the date. 2600 years he has been warning you. Isn't that fair? Ezekiel 38:17. Thus saith the Lord, I am. Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servant and the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? Ezekiel 13, Extract Because the foolish prophets, politicians, have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there is no peace, and unbuilt a wall, NATO and UNO, and others, daubed it with untempered mortar, non-hardening, useless cement, say to them that it shall fall. Therefore you shall not see any more vain prophecies, for I will deliver my people out of your hands, and you shall know that I am the Lord, and my hand will be upon the politicians that prophecy lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they enter into the new Jerusalem or new age. Important. See Luke 19.27. Luke 19.27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring here and slay them before me. Ezekiel 38 Extract Thus say the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, Gog, the prince of Rosh, Russia, Meshech, Moscow, and Tubal, Tubolsk, the western and eastern capitals of the USSR, now called the CIS. I will turn back from seeking peace, and put hooks in your jaws, hunger, and I will bring you forth with all your armed forces in Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, Gomer, Togomora, and all the earth with them against my people, Israel, British, and the British Commonwealth, America, Scandinavia, the Netherlands, the Baltic States, northern France, northern Spain, and the Jews, to the lands of unwalled villages, walls of untempered mortar, without bars or gates, no defenses, because of the defense cuts of the so-called peace dividend, when they, the politicians, Foolish prophets say peace, peace, and there was no peace. There will be those, particularly of the religions, who will want to disagree with the scriptures and God and be confrontational in an attempt at self-justification. They may tell me I'm wrong and may want to quote Revelation chapter 5 as justification for continuing the existence of their eagle organized and self-delusion that they are saved. Just remember that I am not wrong and if you want to know how I know the things that will lead to your survival, you should read The Way Home or Face the Fire. It's not an easy road, but it's the only one. Most have gone astray in the last 2,000 years. If you seek the way, you will need some help with your scriptural learning. Send for a copy of The Way Home or Face the Fire. Copyright 1991 Revised 1997, Ja, all rights reserved. We do not make profits, but you will need to buy a copy at £10 UK or $20 US, the rest of the world. Cash payments, please, for this 168-page authoritative analytical work. It is not a religious document. It is the truth. Click on it for details. Click here for critical analysis on John Paul Pope's blasphemous book, Crossing the Threshold of Hope. For people who have asked for a hard copy of the King of Kings Bible, it is currently not available. Due to Satan's control of organized religion, we are not able to find a publisher to publish the book. The last printing was very small due to its large size and it was quite expensive. If you would like a copy, a CD copy, of the entire Jah Truth website and the King of Kings Bible, I highly recommend that people purchase for $50 a CD that includes everything. It's The Way Home or Face the Fire. It's a book of daily affirmations for the Jedi's, Jesus' disciples, some radio interviews, the entire website of jawtruth.net. 
the King of Kings Bible and software installation. If $50 is too much for all this information, everything is available for free online. This Yoda Jedi Master book is available at an additional cost on Amazon under a different title without the corrections and additions annotations by Ja. So for those of you who say that we're in it for the money, we're not. All of this information is available for free. If you would like the convenience of having it on a CD for easy access anytime, it's $50. Link will be provided below if you're interested in that. Otherwise, live in love. Peace.